Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for joining us today. It is Saturday, December 18th, 2021. Glory. This is the Heart of David International Ministries. I'm your pastor, Dr. Mark Dean. Thank you for joining us today. We got another powerful word. Hallelujah. Again, we're going to talk to the church a little bit. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the subject is, church, you don't have the faith in the word of God like you say you do. Why? Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Let me go ahead and pray and do this opening prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now with great joy and great excitement, Lord, that you are going to send your word with power, with an anointing, Father God, anointing for healing and deliverance, anointing for strength, Lord, and anointing for wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Father God. Lord, we pray that you stir the gifts up on the inside of us in the name of Jesus. We bind every devil and every demon, every hindering spirit, every lying spirit, every spirit of disobedience in the name of Jesus. We bind you up and we cast you out in the name of Jesus. We praise you right now, Lord, and we honor you and we magnify you today. Now we pray and thank you for bringing down your anointing, for being in the midst of us, your presence, Lord. Thank you for your spirit, the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, honor, and glory, and we thank you for deliverance on today, and we thank you for strength on today. Now, Lord, let us digest this word. Let us apply it to our life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the power of prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the power of your word in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> Again, I do thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> thank you. I'm your pastor, Dr. Mark Dean. <clears throat> we got a word today. And again, like I said, the, the subject is church. Why you don't have faith in the word of God like you say you do? Why? And my thing today is... Mm, we don't have the faith or the church don't have the faith in the word of God like the church say they do because we're not seeing many miracles, many signs and wonders. We have too many preachers and too many pastors, too many bishops and apostles, and they worrying about church membership. They're worrying about the wrong thing. You need to be worrying about saving souls. If God called you to preach the word and to teach the word, whether you're an evangelist, whatever it is, your job is ministry, not to get fame and fortune. If you make money off of it, fine. But even if you don't, are you still going to preach? The power needs to be back into the church. The power of God's word need to be back in the church. Every church has not lost its power. I'm not saying that. But in general, you have too many people that don't believe in the power of God, don't have the faith in the, to believe his word. We go to church two, three, four, five, six times a week, and we still don't have the faith to believe in the word of God. Because you got too much world down on the inside of you. And have you actually waited on the Lord when the Lord told you, glory to God, that he is going to deliver you. He told you to be still and you did not be still. You are trying to deliver yourself. And really, you didn't do anything but make things worse. So I ask you again, church. Why we don't have the faith in the word of God the way, we, uh, uh, the way we say we do. And why? Because we run into the world too much. 
we're listening to the politicians and you know pretty much all of them ain't nothing but devils no way they lie on one they lie they say one thing and then you ask them as soon as they get off the podium they saying something else lord jesus you got to understand, you got to have the faith in God's word. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the people that's up in church. You say you believe in the word of God. And soon as something happens, mm, glory to God. You running to the world instead of standing on the word of God. Instead of having the faith in the word of God, Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So how, the question is this, why is there more churches that can really get people delivered? Why isn't there more churches where uh, uh, when you pray, people get healed, people get saved, they get delivered. People come to Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I've seen with my own eyes, it was years ago, but I've seen it in my former church. I've seen a man come up into the church high on heroin. Mm. He got prayed for. Just like that. He had no taste for any kind of drugs. Hallelujah. I have seen with my own eyes that I've seen with my own eyes, people get out of a wheelchair. I've seen a person get out of a wheelchair. I've seen devils cast out. And the problem is, why isn't there more churches that's casting out devils? Why, is there more, why isn't there more churches that have strength Hallelujah. To take on any devil that come up in the church. And now you say, well, pastor, the devils come up in church. Yes, they do. You've seen it with Ananias and Sapphira. You've seen it in uh, 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 1 Corinthians, I believe it is, or 2 Corinthians chapter 11, when the devil will turn himself into an angel of light. And therefore, he would turn his ministers into ministers of righteousness. Let me go ahead and give you scripture because I've been talking. So let me back this up right now. Our base scripture today comes out of Hebrews 11 and 6. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It said, but without faith, it is impossible to, to please him. For he has come, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and the and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so now the question is you up in church do you have the faith that you need hallelujah and are you a re, and are you diligently seeking god we all know if anybody has ever been around in church you know devils go to church every service they there every service just to cause havoc, just to cause trouble, just to start a rumor on somebody or start a rumor about the pastor. So we know the devil is coming to church, but you should have enough power and enough anointing and enough faith in the word of God. Hallelujah. To cast that devil out. Hallelujah. You want so much anointing. Glory to God. Hallelujah, that when a devil do come up into the church, that the anointing is there and that the power of God is there, that the presence of God is there, that they too uncomfortable to stay. They're either going to get delivered or they're going to run out. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Hallelujah. I, I tell you right now, you quote scriptures all the time, but are you standing on the word? Do you have faith in that word that you say you have faith in? Now, keep in mind and let me remind you again, just because you are saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, evidence of speaking in other tongues, hey, glory to God. 
that don't mean you won't have trouble. That don't mean you won't ever go through nothing. But when you are going through something, glory to God. Do Are you still standing on the word of God? Do you still have faith in the word of God? I know it don't look right and I know it don't look good. And I've told you for the last couple of weeks, last month or two at least. Mm. Remember, the Bible says no weapon that is formed against you. So you got to understand weapons are formed against you that you can see. You may even see that weapons, the, the enemies shooting darts at you. They shooting 50 calibers and they trying to uh, uh, launch missiles at you. Mm. But they shall not prosper. Glory be to God. Let's go to scripture because I've been talking a little too much. But I'm, let me go again. I'm going to start off again with the base scripture that we're doing today is the Hebrews 11 and 6. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now understand this. It is impossible, hallelujah, to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. You must believe that God is God. He is the almighty God. He is the God of God. He is the Lord of lords. He is your only redeemer and not in Islam. Mm. Who is not in the black Israelites? It's not in Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses. It's, it's only in Christ Jesus. It's not in confusion. It's not in Buddhism. It's only in Christ Jesus. You got to understand that. Don't be wavering. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. A rewarder of them that diligently seek him, what is that? That's Christ Jesus. Those are the saints of God. Those are the ones who fast and pray and consecrate that believe in his word, that's going to stand on his word no matter what come, no matter what come, no matter who come, who go. You're going to stand on the word of God. Even though you crying and you hollering and you, you can't say nothing, you know you standing on the word of God. Mm. I learned something. Mm. Glory to God. Somebody told me years ago, something's going to happen to you. Hallelujah. Where you going to be so hurt where you might not even be able to pray. You may try. You may want to. But you're so hurt. Something may not come out. Glory to God. But thank God that you got a relationship with Jesus Christ. I said, thank God that you got a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because when you could pray and you could fast and you were strong enough and you were in your right mind, you fasted and you prayed and you were seeking the Lord and you was witnessing the people, you was preaching the people. Hallelujah. You was giving them your testimony. You was excited. You got the zeal of the Lord on the inside of you. Glory to your name. But now something's happened where it's just hard to pray. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. I remember when I first got saved a couple of years in, I remember I walked through the doors and said, Lord, I'm here. I can't praise you. I can't worship you. I'm here. I can't get ain't nothing coming out. I'm just here. Hallelujah. That's why it's always good for you to go to the house of God. Hallelujah. I, I've been telling you this too. Ain't nothing wrong with Facebook and Zoom. I'm on there. But if your church open, if the doors of the church of the, is open, you get to the house of God. God uh, uh, set the church up. God ordained the church. God put the church there. I know we got demons and devils that's up in church, but that's why mm, we got a fasting and a prayer life. That's why we want to seek the Lord, we want to seek his word. That's why we want the understanding and the revelation of his word. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
So you got to have faith in the word of God. And nothing is better to have faith in the word of God is when you're going through. You want to do something, but you know you got to wait. The Lord is telling you, be still. Hallelujah. Let's go on over to that scripture. Let's go to uh, uh, Psalms 46. Hallelujah. Psalms 46 and 10. Hallelujah. And this is something that we have to learn how to do being saints because uh, we got the faith, but also having faith, sometimes God tells you to be still. So let's go right here in Psalms 46 and 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. So he said, be still and know that I am God. That does not mean you stop praying. That does not mean that you stop reading this word. That does not mean that you don't stop going to the house of God. Hallelujah. He just said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens and I will be exalted in the earth. Hallelujah. That does not mean you stop going to church. It does not mean that you stop praying and fasting and seeking the Lord. It does not mean that you stop witnessing the folks. He just telling you to be still, do what you supposed to do. Remember, I've said this before too many a time, do what you supposed to do and let God handle the miracles. Hallelujah. Let God handle the situations. I know you got devils and demons coming up on you. Hallelujah. And it looked like they doing good, but it's called the power of God. It's called the anointing of God. He will be there to straighten everything out for you. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. He said, be still, Psalm 46 and 10. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes you got to be still and know that God is God. Because sometimes God got to tell you to be still so he can give you instructions. He can give you a strategy. But if you don't be still and you don't know that God is going to be God, you're going to do what you want to do. We I, Again, I tell you again, the church got to come back up and have faith in the word. You want the word activated in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Let's talk about activating the word of God real quick. Let's go over to Luke 18 and 1. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Luke chapter 18, verse 1. <clears throat> and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. You got to always pray and not faint. Brothers, stand up and be the men that God has called us to be. You, Hey, God said we are made in his image and in his likeness. Hallelujah. So if we are made in his image and his likeness. And he's given us dominion over the whole earth. Hallelujah. Over the land and the sea and the animals on the land and the animals in the sea. Hallelujah. We are made in his image and his likeness to be a man. Lord Jesus, let me just hit this real quick. To be a man. Not a man who want to be a woman, dressing up like a woman, trying to act like a woman. God called you to be a man. He called you to be the head of your home. He called you mm, to take care of your wife and your children. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You sitting up here on the down low, you up here like a, a, a other men. And you trying to call yourself saved. That is witchcraft. And it's an abomination. You stand up and be the man God called you to do. That's the problem with the world today. It's called great deception. You going to church and you justifying everything you do in the Bible, talking about God understand. God does not understand. God gave us commandments. He gave us rules to live by. 
and you are blatantly doing it, and you think you still going to heaven, going against the word of God, you ain't even trying to get out of your junk. You ain't trying to get out of your sin. You ain't trying to get out of your wickedness. You ain't trying to get out of your abomination. Hallelujah. You're not trying to get out of transgression. And yet you think you're going to go to heaven. Whoo, glory to God. Glory to your name. It ain't going to happen. It ain't about being judgmental and talking about folks. It's about understanding and rightly dividing the word of truth. One of the reasons and the main reason why the church don't have power to deliver people and get people healed and saved and delivered because preachers aren't preaching the word. They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. You got too much concern on what you want to do, how you want to do it. But if God called you to minister, that's what you're supposed to do. I know you need a balance. You have to have a balance and that is true. You do need that. <clears throat> But I'm telling you now, more people will be delivered and will be saved if the preacher rightly divides the word of truth. We already know you can't make everybody happy. We already know that. They're going to talk about you if you're doing good. They're going to talk about you if you're doing bad. Your enemy is going to find something about you that, that they can talk about. And they're going to blow it up. Oh, they could have, you could have ran the red light. Oh, he saved. He could, he didn't read, he didn't ran the red light. He should, he should go down to the police station and tell the police he read the, he ran the red light and he should go ahead and pay his fine. You should pay your fine. I, I'm just saying, you know, they come up with all kind of crazy stuff and then they get mad at you because you because you preaching the word and you rightly dividing the word of truth. They mad at you. And they always talk about you being judgmental. Judgment is all in this Bible. Am I not right? Judgment is all in this Bible. Peter called judgment on Ananias and Sapphira. Am I right? Paul mm, called judgment down. Whoo, glory to God. On the church of Corinth, and Paul wasn't even there. You read Corinthians chapter four, 5. Paul said, I am not there in the flesh, but I am there in the spirit, and this is my judgment. There are many people who have called judgment down because God gave them the authority to. So stop saying you judging folks and the Bible says you should not judge. If God has given you the authority and the ability to do so, that's what you should do. And I, again, the greatest uh, uh, situation or illustration, you a parent. You make, you, you make your judgments every day. And you don't care what your kids think. This is what we're going to do. This, this is it. This is what we're doing. We ain't arguing about it. We ain't going to debate about it. We ain't going to discuss it. This is it. That's it. That is a judgment. When you're on your job, you make a judgment. You ain't got to be the supervisor or the team leader, but you got to make a judgment. Lord Jesus, the church has to stand up. And have faith in the word of God the way that they say they do. The way that we should have. Hallelujah. Preachers are, are scared to cast out devils these days. They don't want to offend nobody. They don't want nobody to get mad and upset. They don't want nobody to leave. They don't want them... To you know, to stop paying tithes because you telling them what the Lord told you. I'm talking about somebody real now. I ain't talking about no hypocrite and preacher. I'm talking about somebody who got a relationship. Hey, with the almighty God. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to walk with you in the cool of the day. Hallelujah. Let's get back to it. He said, men are always to pray and not to faint. And we're talking about always pray. 
Don't faint. Don't faint. Don't give up your prayer life. I don't care what's happening. I know you want to cry, but you just cry while you praying. I know you want to give up, but as you giving up, you better be praying. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, help me. Lord, anoint me. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. I said glory to your mighty name. The reason why the church don't have the power because we worried about the world. The world is influencing the church instead of the church influencing the world. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, 1 John 2 and 16. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm sorry. It's First John chapter two, verse fifteen. Hallelujah. We're gonna read uh, First John chapter two, fifteen and sixteen. Hallelujah. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's what the problem is. Too many preachers, too many churches, you got the love of the world on the inside of you, and you don't have the love of the Father. You can't love God and you love this world. You, need, you, you only can do one now. You can't love God and mammon. Mammon is just money. That's what the meaning of the word is. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to your mighty name. He said, love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So now go back and evaluate. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Now, come on now. We live in this world. We know that. But you don't want the world to over uh, to consume you. If you love this world more than you love the word of God, if you love this world more than you love God, if you love this world more than you love the presence of God, and if you love this world whoo, more than you love God's anointing, who glory to God. The love of the Father is not in you. You can't love this world and expect the anointing to be on you and in you and for God to use you. You may be some person that's gifted, but you have no anointing behind it. Church, you need to teach your people, thank God the man can preach. But we want to know if he is anointed. We want to know, are you getting revelation from on high? Are you getting it directly from the throne room? Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Hey, I said glory to your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Now let's read verse 16, 15 and 16 together. First John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. The lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. We got to keep our flesh under subjection to the best of our ability. 
and the lust of the eye. We don't need to be watching things that we shouldn't need to be watching. You say in your favorite movies, the X-rated movies, pornos, and you watch it every day, but you say and you say. So that's the lust of the eye. The lust of the eye is when you're always on YouTube and all you're doing is going to street fights and, and shootouts. That's the lust of the eye. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. The lust of the flesh. You allowing your flesh to take over because you fornicate. You allowing your flesh to take over because you still smoking. You allow your flesh to come over because you're doing other drugs, whether it's heroin, crack, meth, you know, whatever it is. So we do our best to keep our flesh under subjection. We want to make sure that we don't have too much pride is the pride of life has killed many people. Don't, don't get me wrong. You got to have some kind of pride now. You need to be prideful in being a man. You need to be prideful that you got a beautiful wife and that you got a home. There's nothing wrong with that. Hallelujah. Be prideful that God has blessed you. You may not have a hundred million dollars, but God has blessed you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, and the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. He that doeth the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. He said, and the world passes away mm -hmm. and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Father abides forever. So he that do the will of the Father abide is forever. Remember, he tells you, I believe it's in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth are going to pass away, but my word, my word will never pass away. My word will be here until the end of time, until for all eternity. Hallelujah. I said my word. That's what Jesus said. That's what God said. But you want to have the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And that is all of the world. Mm. Whoo, glory. And once the world pass away, mm, the lust thereof, mm, and the lust thereof, but my word will abide forever. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. So now, let's go back over to Hebrews. We want the power of God in our life. Let's go to Hebrews and read that one more time. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to believe him. It is impossible. Let me start over. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So how can you be a rewarder of God? A rewarder? How can God reward you? And you trying to seek God a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can't diligently seek him if you still got the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life dominating your lifestyle, dominating your heart, your mind, and your spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me find this real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Okay, let's go ahead. You know what? Let's go ahead and read uh, uh, St. John chapter 2. And uh, let's read it. Let's start at 13. And the Jews passed over, and the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and dove, and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cord, he, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto, unto them that sold doves, these things hence, take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. So understand something, Jesus was mad. And these are the preachers here that making their church a church for merchandise. I know churches sell stuff and I'm not really, you know, talking about that. I'm talking about all you do is 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 still money. The the church is just there and they got a church name on there. Other than that, it ain't got nothing to do with Christ Jesus. It ain't got nothing to do with God. These are the people who are robbing, stealing, and cheating, and they have the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Hallelujah. And Jesus had to tell them, you don't make my house, my father's house, a den of thieves. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Mm. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 16 again in St. John chapter 2 and 16. And he said unto them that so doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. So the church shouldn't be a church of merchandise. Again, let me explain something. I'm not saying that, you know, some churches, you know, everybody's selling masks, everybody's selling teacups and coffee cups. That's fine. That's fine. If you want it, you want it. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you actually, and all you do for the church is trying to figure out how to get more money and how to steal money. And now I know we got to pay for stuff, you know, the light bill or whatever, and the maintenance on the building, on the grounds. I understand all that. Hallelujah, glory to your mighty name. But <clears throat> these are also the pre preachers that are not preaching sound doctrine. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 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 I, oh, I brought up sound doctrine. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your mighty name. Mm. Hallelujah. So we don't, I, I, I brought it up, but let me read this to you too. Mm. Whoo, glory to your name. Mm. Let's read verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live the gospel. But I have used none of these things Neither have I written these things that it should be so done unto me, for it is, for it were better for me to die than, than that any man should make my glory void. So we're going back up here. In 9 and 14, 1 Corinthians 9 and 14, even so has the Lord ordained. They that which preach the gospel should live the gospel. So we got too many preachers that's preaching the gospel. They ain't living the gospel. They ain't trying to live the gospel. They got too much of the world on the inside of them of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory <clears throat> to your mighty name. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Whoo, thank you, Jesus. So now let's understand that they which preach the gospel must live the gospel. Because if you live in the gospel and you preach in the gospel, your church, I'm talking to the leadership, your church will have more anointing in it. You will be able to do more stuff in the spirit, whether it's healing, casting out devils. You can see signs, wonders, and miracles. Hey, glory to God. Don't say that was back for then. It's still now. God's word is not void. It'll never change. But these are the preachers who allow their church to be uh, a den of thieves. And you can't do that. If you're really seeking the power of God, the anointing of God, the presence of God, if you really want to see miracles, if you really want to see signs and wonders, if you really want to see healing, if you really want to see deliverance, and if you really want to see devils cast out, you want to see miracles that blind eyes be opened and people that lost their limbs, that their limbs will grow back. Hallelujah. You want the anointing of God. You want to live for God. You want to have the faith in God's word to live right. You want to preach it. And you want to live it because you preach it. And that ain't just from the, for the preacher. That's everybody that go to church. Hallelujah. You say you're a child of God, you live like you're a child of God. Hallelujah. 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 Now, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Okay, we don't go to 1 Corinthians in chapter 2, but here are the problem. Whoo, the church, the leadership. You got to live this word. Don't just preach it. Don't allow your church to be turned into a den of thieves. Don't allow devils to just creep up in your church. We know we can't stop every devil from coming, but you should have some discernment. Hallelujah. You need to teach a congregation to pray. If they don't know how, teach them to pray. That's why I say corporate prayer is very important. It teaches people how to pray. If you can get to corporate prayer at the church, go. My God. Well, it's only 30 minutes. I don't care if it's 30 minutes, 10 minutes, two minutes, or two hours. Get there. Because remember, Hebrews 10 and 25, you need to assemble yourselves together the more as you see that day approaching. And if you can't see that day approaching right now, when you got LBGT always talking about civil rights and they, no, that's totally different from civil rights. If you want to live in perversion and abomination, that's on you. But don't tell the world to do it and don't show enough, don't tell the church to do it. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, glory to your name. <laughs> so, Hallelujah. We want to have faith to see signs, wonders, and miracles, to see deliverance, to see the dead raised. Listen, listen to me. I'm talking about the dead raised because Jesus said, and Lord Jesus, 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 let me do one thing before I read this. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Then he said unto them. Was it Luke or St. John? Let me find it. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So again, you got to have faith in the word to activate it. Let's go to um, St. John chapter 14, and we're going to read verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father. Jesus said that. But now we're coming back and we're wondering why the church don't have power. Because the preacher that preaching the gospel don't live the gospel. And why don't we have the power in the church like we're supposed to? Because you have made God's house a den of thieves. A church is supposed to be a hospital. A spiritual hospital, a spiritual ICU, a spirit, spiritual uh, uh, critical care unit. It's an ICU, it's a trauma room, it's an emergency room. But it's also an outpatient room. Hallelujah. You are supposed to come there and get healed in your spirit and in your soul and in your mind. Hallelujah, glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah, glory. Hey, 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 hey. So when Jesus said, and greater work than these, when we do in St. John 14 and 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. I'm going to read verse 4, and then I'm going to go back up. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Verse 2 and 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So you want the demonstration of spirit and with power. Paul said, hey, I didn't come to you with the wisdom of man's word. Hallelujah. I'm coming to you with the power of God. I'm coming to you with the demonstration of the spirit and with power. Because the demonstration of the spirit, Paul's shadow healed somebody. Paul was laying hands on folks and it was miracles and they were signs and they were wonders. That's the power of God. And that's the faith in God. Again, why the church don't have the faith why, why the church don't have the faith in God's word like you say you do? Why? You don't believe in and praying for folks and casting out devils. You ain't looking for miracles. You ain't looking for signs and wonders. If God don't ever use you in miracles, if he don't ever use you in raising the dead, you still should be expecting it. <laughs> why? Because he said, hmm. Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because what did he tell you? What did he tell you? Hallelujah. Let's go back to Hebrews. <clears throat> Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please, to please him. <clears throat> but without but without faith, it is impossible to believe him. For he has come as, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. For it, for without faith, it is impossible to believe God. Without faith. But you want the word of God on the inside of you with the uh, uh, with the spirit in the demonstration with power. Let me read this again. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of spirit and, and of power. You want the demonstration of spirit and you want it with power. When you preach and you want the demonstration of of spirit and you want it with power 
expect the power of God to move in your life. Expect the power of God to move in the church that you go to. You pray for that every day. Lord, I want to see miracles. I want to see somebody raised from the dead. I want to see signs and wonders. I want to see somebody's limb grow back. I got the faith to believe it. Stir up the anointing on the inside, up in my church, Lord. Hallelujah. That devils can't come up in there no more. Hallelujah. That they just uncomfortable. Mm. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your mighty name. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Let me go ahead and just read a little bit. And I'm going to start off at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And brethren, when I came <clears throat> to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I am determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse two, Peter said, look, <clears throat> I don't want to know nothing. The only thing I want to know is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Him crucified, meaning he was crucified. He was raised from the dead on the third day. And he took the all of the whole, he took the sins of the world away. And him crucified. Paul said, I don't want to hear about <clears throat> no Princess Diana and, and uh, my God, and Moloch and Baal. I don't want to hear about Zeus. They ain't nobody. They ain't real. I'm here to preach Christ Jesus and him crucified. I don't want to know nothing else. I don't need to hear nothing else. Paul said, my testimony I gave to you. You know my history before I came to Christ Jesus. So I don't need to know of some false God that you're trying to explain to me. I know what Christ Jesus did in my life and him alone. And he didn't tell me about no other God or no idol worship. He said, don't do it. I'm not going to do it. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your mighty name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's read verse 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3. And we're going to read a little bit. And I was, <clears throat> And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in, in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And that's what the church needs to get to. Stop putting your faith in the wisdom of men instead of, and you, you getting scared instead of, but put it in the power of God. Don't put your faith up against the wisdom of men. You put it in the power of God. You put it in Christ Jesus. You put it in his word. You put it in the Holy Ghost. You put it in the blood of Jesus. That's what you do. Glory to your mighty name. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh, I hear you. Glory to your mighty name. Let's read that again in verse 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And if your faith can uh, stand in the power of God. Hallelujah. The church will be stronger. Hallelujah. The church will be stronger. You can't tuck your tail and run every time something happens. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to stand because God told you to stand. Well, Lord, I can't take these people on. You know that, but I want you to stand. I need you to be still. <clears throat> <clears throat> let's go ahead over to uh the first chronicles or second chronicles hallelujah oh 
Okay. <clears throat> Second Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to go ahead and go to verse 3. But let me give you a little <clears throat> narrative of it. <clears throat> Jehoshaphat, he the king of Israel, and his messengers came unto him, his men came unto him, his counselors, his generals came unto him. He said, Moab and Amnon, hallelujah, they are coming. Let me just read this, verse 1, 20 and 1. And it came to pass after this also, that the children of Moab and the children of Amnon and with them other besides the Amorites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. So they came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Jehoshaphat's counselors came to him. His generals came to him and said, look, we got three countries coming against us. There's no way on God's green earth we're going to be able to, to win this battle. I'm telling you right now, King, I'm a captain of your army. I, I'm a general, and I'm ready to die for my king and my lord. But they telling him, look, we can't take on three nations, three nations against one. We just can't do it. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. So verse three, this is what I want to get to. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse three. And this is what the church still need to get back to. It says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. That's, that's what we got to do. You fear you need to set yourself to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. I know what I see. I can't take you on. But I'm turning my face to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, I got a little fear coming up on me, but I'm turning my face to seek the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's read that again. First Chronicles, second Chronicles, chapter 20, verse three. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Israel. Jehoshaphat was so scared. <clears throat> that he turned his face to seek the Lord and he had everybody, he put his whole kingdom on the fast. He put everybody. We all need to fast and seek the Lord. Hallelujah, because we got a great multitude that's coming up against us. And if God don't help us, we will be all be slaughtered or taken into slavery. Hey, glory to your mighty name. So the church need to turn their face to seek the Lord again. Stop going to a, 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 a witch or a warlock. You up here saved and you calling the psychic hotline. What, what about the, the anointing in the spirit of God? What about the wisdom of God? What about spiritual counsel that God tells you that you need to have? Don't nobody care about you uh, 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 prophesying. You prophesying out the spirit of a devil. You better watch that. Jehoshaphat turned to set faith to seek the Lord. See, Je Jehoshaphat's smart because he, he brought all of Jerusalem and Judah into the house of God. And Jehoshaphat turned the service over to the priests, hey, and to the prophets. Mm. Hey, they gave them a strategy. And they said, send Judah first. And Judah is praise and worship. That's why we have to remember when we going through and we turn in our face to seek the Lord, we got to praise. Hallelujah. Praise your way out of it. Don't go run in a corner and cry. You ain't prayed. You ain't fasted. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't done nothing. You just crying. You got to go out and praise the Lord in the midst of your battle, in the midst of your trial, you go ahead and praise the Lord. They got prophesied to in the house of God. And the priest and the prophet told them, you'll win, but you got to send Judah first. Let Judah go out and praise and worship. That's why the song say, don't wait until the battle over, shout now. Shouting and praising the Lord is a weapon. As good as prayer. Hallelujah. I said it's as good as prayer. So when he turns himself to seek the Lord, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Mm. Jehoshaphat told the congregation to go on a fast or the nations to go on a fast. And then he told them to meet him in the house of the Lord. And as he is meeting him, as they are meeting in the house of the Lord, the prophets and the priests step up. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Woo. Mm. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Let's go ahead and read uh, Second Chronicles chapter, chapter 20, verse 8. And they dwelled therein and had built thee a sanctuary therein for, for thy name, saying, If, when evil comes upon us as a sword, judgment, and pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in the presence, and in thy presence, for thy name is in his house, and cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou shalt hear and help. Listen, they come down to the house of the Lord where your name is, where your name dwell. Hallelujah. That's what they're doing. They went to the house of the Lord. They didn't go to no bar. They didn't go to no strip club. They didn't go to no, go get no prostitute or go to no prostitute's house. They didn't go to the dope house and get high. They turned themselves to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Woo, glory to God. Let's go ahead and go hey, to your mighty name. Hallelujah. If we go to St. John 16. Hallelujah. Yeah, we did that already. Mm. So let's do a real quick narrative of what we talked about today is the, the church, uh, church, why you don't have faith in the word of God like you say you do and why. Because the preacher that's preaching the gospel must live it, number one. You must believe. You must have faith in God because it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please him. So now the church, the pastors need to have the faith that God is going to do everything he said he did. I, I know you don't like it, but you're really an example to other people. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians. See, the 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. Let me look real quick. 1 Corinthians 2. <clears throat> All right, it is the uh, second Corinthians chapter 11. We're gonna go to okay, second Corinthians chapter 11, and we're gonna read verse 13 through 15. All right, the subject again is church. You don't have faith in the word of God like you say you do, and why? Why is like I said, those who preach the gospel must live. It. And it's impossible to believe God. If, if you don't have faith, it's impossible to believe him. But Jehoshaphat, like I just read, had faith in God. He put his whole nation on a fast. And he went into the house of God to seek the Lord. And he had his his priest and his prophets. Hallelujah. Speak what thus said the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. This is also what we must watch for. Uh, for 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Marvel and marvel not, for Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is no great thing for his ministers also to be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. <coughs> whose end shall be according to their works. So the church need to have faith in the word of God like they say to do. You got to walk in faith. And you can pray and look, pray, Lord, I want to see the dead raised. I want to see blind eyes open. I want to see the lame to walk. I want to see people's limbs grow back. I want to see people's teeth grow back. If he don't ever do it, don't do it. But expect if he don't ever use you to do it, but always expect to do it, just in case he does use you. You got to have the faith in the word of God. But the church got to get back and having faith to the word of God. You ain't got no business having more faith in the world than you do the word of God. You got more faith in your than your boss in the company that you work for than you have faith in the house of God. Lord have mercy, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So we got to watch out because we do have some people up in church now that are that serve Satan because he turned himself into an angel of light and he is doing miracles. So you think he legit because he's doing miracles. Let me take you to one more scripture. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Woo, glory to God. Maybe two more. We'll see. Hallelujah. <clears throat> okay. Let's read uh, Revelation chapter 16, and we're going to read verse 13. <clears throat> We're going to read verse 13, 14. Yeah, we're going to read Revelation chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. <clears throat> and I saw three unclean spears like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. For they are the spirit, they are the spirits of devil, working miracles, which go forth unto, unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. They talking about the battle of Armageddon right now. Hallelujah. But he just told you in verse 13 and 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And they are all spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the and of the whole world to gather themselves to battle of that great day of God Almighty. You know, we're talking about deception right now. There are unclean spirits. One came out of the mouth of the dragon. One came out of the mouth of uh, <clears throat> the beast. And the other one came out of the mouth of the false prophets. That's why you got to have discernment. And that's why you need to pray, Lord, give me discernment, Father God. Lord, give me childlike faith. Give me faith that I can remove a mountain. 
Hallelujah. Give me faith, Lord, in your word that I will not be moved. Even when I'm crying and I'm fearful, I'm still praising you and I'm still worshiping you and I'm still magnifying your name. Hallelujah. Let the church come back and be strong, church. A church united, not Baptist versus this one and uh, versus and me and Pentecostal apostolic is against Pentecostal church of God in Christ. Bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Rebuke the spirit of deception and rebuke the spirit of pride. Rebuke the spirit of selfishness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to rebuke it. Hallelujah. You rebuke every devil and every demon that's trying to come against your home. Devil, you're not taking my home out. You're not tearing it up again. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus come against you. I'm being watchful right now. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is going to do all that he need to do for me. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. You wondering why God won't do it because you don't have the faith in the word. Let's go to James and then we're going to leave off James. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go to James chapter 2, verse 18. It says, Yea, a man may say that thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my work. So he's telling you here, yea, a man may say thou hast faith. Now you saying you got faith, right? Mm. He's saying, but I got works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show you my faith by my works. So you tell me you have faith and you ain't putting no work to it. But I'm going to show you my faith by my works because I'm putting works to the faith and the word of God that what he said. The church got to come back and have faith in the word of God, like they said. There's power. You want the demonstration of the spirit and with power, of the spirit and with power. That's what the church need to get back to. That's what you need to pray for you, for your church, and for your family. Glory be to God. There's such an attack on the church. You got folks that so deceive. They may not be in homosexuality, but they will accept a preacher or somebody preaching to me. They are a hope or open homosexuality. You got a man and, and he got some other man. They adopted some kid and they talking about the pastor and the first gentleman. And you dumb enough, crazy enough, stupid enough to stay under that jump. Lord Jesus, you go ahead and read the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah got on not just the uh, 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 the priests and the prophets for prophesying lies, but he also said, I'm going to get you for allowing yourself to be deceived. Come on now. He going to get you for allowing yourself to be deceived. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's read this one more time. Glory to God. Mm. James chapter 2 verse 18 yea a man may say thou hast faith and I have works show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works I'll show you my faith by my works I never said everybody was perfect but you are showing up doing the best you can to serve God and to live for God you saved and you cussing somebody out every day, every day, because the book of Matthew, I think it's chapter 15 or 13, somewhere around there. He said, it's not what's in you that defiles the body, it's what, what, is what comes out of you, because what comes out of you is what's in you. Glory to your mighty name. <laughs> Glory to your mighty name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 So now let's talk. Mm. Glory. Let's go to, uh, <clears throat> let's go to, uh, 
Let's go to verse 12. James chapter one, let's do 12 and 13. Blessed is a man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither, <coughs> neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. This is when you let your lust get out of hand. And we just told you, you got the lust of that. I, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Go, hey, glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah, Father God, we thank you for this word in the name of Jesus. We glorify you, we magnify you, and we praise you today. Now, Lord, let this word penetrate our hearts and our minds. And we pray that everybody that listens to the word, whether it's on YouTube, or Facebook, or Twitter, Father God, LinkedIn, whatever it is, Lord. Let it be a strength and a great deliverance for them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen to me. Woo! Glory to God. You want the church to get back to having faith in the word of God. You need to run to the house of God. And you pray that when you run to the house of God, that the leadership there are legit, that they're real. You want a real man of God preaching. You want somebody that loved the Lord, that loved the Lord Jesus Christ, that loved souls. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you for joining us. This is the Heart of David International Ministries. <coughs> I'm your pastor, Dr. Mark Dean. I do encourage you to uh, subscribe and watch and share on YouTube and on Facebook. It is the Heart of David International Ministry. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. That's on Facebook. We also have something on Twitter. Hallelujah. So uh, I do encourage you to like, share. Again, if you want prayer, send it in. H-O-D-I-M 1117 at gmail.com or hodim.org. That is the church website. I'm still working on that website. So we'll have some more stuff up a little bit later. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. But remember, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you want prayer, please send it in. There's power in prayer. Hey, glory to God. There's power in the word of God. We just got to activate it. We want the spirit. We want the uh, uh, we want the demonstration of the spirit and with power. That's what we want, the demonstration of the spirit and with power. Well, what is that? Anything God said? Because we just told you in Luke 14 and 12, I believe, Jesus said, uh, uh, I've done all these works and greater. Let me read that. I'm a, and I'm going to go after this because I, I, I messed up on the quote. So I'm going to tell to say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. 14, 12. Oh, Luke, it must be John 14. <clears throat> okay. John 14 and 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So he said that, right? So when we go to uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, and he talk about and greater, uh, uh, you want the demonstration of the spirit with power. The demonstration of the spirit with power. So why can't we act for that? And why can't we seek that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we go right here. And we're about to go again. And my speech and my preaching was not without enticing words of men. I'm not trying of men's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. I'm not trying to impress you with the wisdom of man. I'm trying to get through to you with the demonstration of the spirit and with power of the spirit 
and with power. <clears throat> Hallelujah, glory to your mighty name. We thank you and we magnify you today. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be back tonight. I am going to try. But our evening service is 5 p.m. Pacific time and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have some things to do. I'm going to try to uh, uh, get it done so we can do this evening service. So I don't know. But I do encourage you, if I'm not on, go to the uh, YouTube and go to uh, uh, Facebook, the Heart of David International Ministry. Hallelujah. You'll see my face on there. I, I encourage you to like and to share. Hallelujah. Again, if you got any prayer requests, send it in. There's power in prayer, and you got to have the faith in the word and in the power of your prayer. Have faith in the prayers that you pray. Hallelujah. Knowing that the power of God is going to be there. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. You get out of the flesh so you can get into the spirit of God. Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Remember, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you soon. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.